excited to have Scott with us tonight. Scott yeah. Landsberg. Oh, yeah. um, Scott is also known as the Human Calculator, and that was a nickname that was given to him by Regis Philbin. Um, he's an educator, a speaker, he's a Guinness World Record holder. Uh, he's a best selling author and the host of the Human Calculator television show on the History Channel. Uh, Scott's been teaching mental math and entertaining people around the world and on television with his unfathomable math skills for over 30 years. Scott is on a personal mission to help students and adults overcome their fear of math and promote numeracy. Did I say numeracy. that right? Numeracy. numeracy. Mm -hmm. Born of his love for math and dedication to helping others improve their basic math skills comes the counting bee. So Scott has created the Counting Bee, which will be happening next year. What month is that happening in? It's two weeks here in Arizona. So then next year will be the first national. So next national. year is the first national yeah. one. Ooh. The Counting Bee is an annual, fast-paced, and exciting math competition in which contestants are asked to calculate a broad uh, selection of skip counting patterns, which I think Scott will demonstrate for us tonight uh, with varying degrees of difficulty. Uh, over the years, Scott's been seen on Oprah Show, Tonight Show with uh, Jay Leno, Ellen Show, ESPN, Fox and Friends, Good Morning America, USA Today, and countless other shows. So we're super excited to have Scott with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, cool. Hey, thanks for coming out tonight, everybody. Uh, I had a gift for numbers when I was a little kid, and nobody knew what to do with me. And uh, so I'm going to share a little bit of that with you tonight, just give you a demonstration of what I can do, and then we'll talk about some other things. Um, I've got a theory about numbers and math, uh, arithmetic, that I want to share with you tonight. And um, I also have invented a new calendar, so I hope we have time to talk about time. No pun intended. Okay, so, uh, okay, so you're going to run the calculator for me. And um, I tell uh, people when I perform that I'm not an athlete, that I'm a mathlete. So I have to stretch out my brain a little bit to get going, all right? So would you mind picking some numbers for me? And I'm going to add them up in my head. And he's going to do them on the calculator, okay? So let's just start out with some two-digit. It'll show right here. So oh, yeah. I'll, to I'll, uh, <laughs> you'll be able to see the numbers over here. Um, but just start off with some two-digit numbers, and I'll say plus between each two-digit number. And make sure he gets it in there and he's keeping up with you. And he's going to add them up on there, and I'll try to add them up in my head, all right? So let's make sure we got a zero. Okay, I'm ready when you are. What's your name? Anna. Okay, rock and roll. How many do you want? Oh, uh, until we get bored. Just kidding. You'll do a bunch of them. Okay, so go ahead. Two-digit number. 15 plus 73 plus 28 plus make sure he's keeping up with you 52 plus 63 plus 17 one more 19 267 okay so hey thank you so uh, how many of you could do that I disagree I'm gonna show all of you how to do that I discovered how to do that by mistake when I was in third grade and it's a very simple uh, Technique. So I'll show you how to do that in just a minute, all right? Um, but let's still warm up. Same thing. You can go back and forth. Yeah, clear it out. Let's try some multiplication. Just pick like two two digit numbers just to get started, all right? Uh, 27 times 75. Uh, that's 2025. Yeah, all right? Yeah. Okay, try another one. I'm warming up. I'll get faster as we go here. Okay. I'm having a hard time remembering that number I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 63 times. Uh, that's uh, 2898, something like that, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. lucky guess, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's try one more. Uh, let's try division, that's a little bit tougher. Try a three digit by a one digit. Three digit by one digit? Yeah, use some odds and evens and get some decimals. Uh, 287. 287 divided by? Uh, six. Uh, uh, 40, uh, 286 that we said, or 287? You said 287, right? So it's 47.8333333333333. Okay, so try one more. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's do 726. 726 divided by? Eight. Uh, 90.75. Okay. All right, so now I'm warmed up, and I can do all kinds of square roots, cube roots, and all kinds of stuff like that. But tonight I want to get into my Guinness World Record. Uh, when I was in front of math class at eighth grade, my buddy Andrew had a... Uh, calculator and it did something that surprised us both we didn't know what was going to happen but he was just quizzing me and he said 28 plus 28 and he hit equals and I said 56 and by accident he hit equals again and it added 28 more 
And he goes, hey, well, what's 28 more? And I said, well, that's 84. And he hit equals again and added 28 more. And he goes, what's that? What's the next one? And they're like, something just woke up in my brain that I can count by any number. So put in a calculator and let's just punch in seven plus seven and hit equals just so everybody can see what the calculator does. And just start hitting equals. And you'll see that the calculator will start counting by seven. You can see that it's adding it. Just look at the green answers and you can keep, keep up with the running total. So it's called a constant. Uh, counting by numbers. So the Guinness World Record people gave me 15 seconds to count as fast as I could, racing the fastest accountant in the world using a 10 key calculator. So the judge chose 38. So the guy on the calculator had to do 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus 38 plus 38 as fast as he could, racing me counting out loud by 38 for 15 seconds. And at the end of the 15 seconds, he had 28 answers and I had 36. So I actually beat the machine by eight. So I'll share that with you now. Uh, pick a tough two digit number you want me to count by? Um, 46. 46 plus 46 equals. Tell me when you're ready. And I'll start off slow and I'll just get going faster and faster. Tell me you're ready to rock. Go ahead. Okay. 92, 138, 184, 230, 276, 322, 368, 414. 4605065525986446907367828214115010165101019614214192 Oh, you're going much faster. Oh yeah, you got yeah. 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 That's, That's impressive. Was <laughs> that was he was you were ahead of me. That's why I was No, no, clear down. Let's try one more. I don't know if I can talk that fast. Let's try one more. Okay, go ahead. Because he beat you last yeah. time, Thomas. Go ahead, try another number. Let's do two digit? Yeah, yeah, just one more two digit. 72. All right, so 72 plus 72. All right, you ready? All right, so you got 144. 216, 288, 360, 432, 504, 576, 648, 720. 792-864-936-1008-1080-1152-1224-1296-1368-1441-502-154-1576-1728. Oh yeah, all right, give it to her. All right, right on there. So, um, I don't know why, I mean, I can count by any number. When you, when you say 72, my mind is flying. My mouth can't keep up with my brain. It's happening so quickly. So, I always wonder if my buddy didn't ask me that question, in front of math class that day and I didn't discover that I could do this, you know, and then for Guinness to quantify and all that stuff. But uh, so now what's interesting is when I did this for Guinness is, is we went to a TV commercial break and the judge came over and said, Scott, you beat the accountant, so you're in the book. He goes, but we got one problem. We think you're cheating. And I was like, well, how do you cheat counting by 38? And he goes, well, we don't think you're actually counting. We think you've just memorized all these answers. I said, that would be impressive if I could recall numbers that quickly. And he says, can you prove to us that you're not memorizing it? So, <coughs> clear it out. <coughs> a calculator always starts at zero. So when you ask me to count by 72, I could have memorized zero, 72, 144, which would be an impressive feat. Uh, but that's not how I'm wired. I'm just a human calculator. So instead of starting at zero, what if we started at a totally random three digit number? And then I had to count by another number. There's no way I could have memorized every number from every other number. So pick a random three digit number as our new zero for this example. 549. What was that? 549. <coughs> 549. Now I've never done this before. Hit plus. And now pick a two-digit number you want me to count by, starting at 549. Let's do uh, 61. One's too easy. That's pretty boring. Okay. You know what I mean? 63. <laughs> okay, so 549 plus 63. Tell me when you're ready to go. I've never done this pattern before. You ready? And now I'm just doing equals, right? Yep, keep up with me. Ready? 612, 675-738-801-864-927-990. 1053 same speed, thank you. So there's no memorization. I'm literally calculating. And uh, I was just telling these guys before the show tonight, uh, at the World Championships uh, two years ago in Las Vegas, um, I've had this record for 20 years. And somebody challenged me to this world record um, 
uh, in twenty in November twenty sixteen. And so, uh, but she challenged me through a three digit number. So let's clear the calculator and uh, pick a three digit number you want me to count by. Make sure it's one you and I practiced yesterday that we talked about. <laughs> let's do seven twenty four. Okay, good one. All right, seven days a week, twenty four hours a day. All right, so tell me when you're ready. Seven twenty four. You ready? Plus seven twenty four. Yep. How many when you are? 1448 It's the same speed. My brain literally, as soon as I hear that number, I can tune into it like a frequency and just start counting by that number. So that's why I'm called the human calculator. And uh, I've got to travel around the world and meet all kinds of mental calculators and People have different gifts for different certain areas of math, maybe square roots, cube roots, adding, multiplying, dividing. There's all these different world records. Uh, the one that didn't exist was this one, the counting record. And so um, I tried to invent a contest that I could win. So that's why I invented uh, National Counting Bee, except I'm disqualified from participating, so don't worry. Uh, but um, the National Spelling Bee has been going on for 91 years. Millions of kids every year. It's inspired kids to become literate and learn how to read and write and all that. So I want to do the same with numeracy because it feels like it's become socially accepted to be bad at math. Even people in tech industry have calculators in their pockets and don't do a lot of mental math. So it's not like everybody here or in tech training for coding is a human calculator. And I don't want people to think that because you know we all have to deal with numbers in everyday life no matter what job we have. But in the tech industry, it almost seems like it's an expected thing, like you should be a bit of a mathematical person. But I have met a lot of people in the tech industry that aren't really numerate. And so tonight, not just for you guys, but the people watching at home too, I wanna to share with you something that I think is gonna revolutionize the relationship between numbers and humans, okay? So before I do that, though, would you give a, Thomas a big hand for helping out? That was a lot of pressure. Great job, I appreciate it. So, um, Everybody take a look at the calculator. It's so funny. When I was growing up, uh, you, could, you couldn't find one of these. You know, it was a big deal. It was like a three, $400 piece of equipment. Uh, maybe one kid at school had one. Uh, and now you can get them at the 99 cent store. They're included on our phones. Uh, they're on your laptops. They're everywhere. So it feels like it's become socially accepted to be bad at math because we have this little calculator we can reach to any time. So tonight, I want to share with you how to turn on this calculator in our brain. I was featured on a TV show called Stan Lee's Superhumans. And he took me to a uh, brain center and they watched my brain as I was doing my world record. And uh, my mouth was moving too quickly and it messed up the readings of the instruments. So the doctor asked me to do my world record, but just do it in my head, not to speak out loud, to see if they could capture that information processing. And sure enough, it lit up the screen and they identified area 44, which is called Broman's area. It's right here. This is where we do number crunching. But we don't teach to this brain. We teach math using our memory. If I ask you all six plus six, you all know it's 12, but nobody's really doing any math. You're not counting your fingers. You're not doing any arithmetic. You're recalling that from your memory. If I ask you eight plus eight, you know it's 16, just like that. But again, you're still not exercising the math part of your brain, you're retrieving it from your memory. So tonight, I'm not here to emphasize what you're doing. I wanna show you a whole new way to see numbers. So everybody just take a look at the calculator. I'm gonna treat you all like you're all nine years old for just a couple seconds. Don't take it personally, it's just to show you what happens when we got kids in elementary school where they're trying to connect the dots and we have a great opportunity and we miss it every time because our default is that, hey, hey kids, memorize all these math facts. Well, to give kids all this data, to memorize and be able to recall easily and never give them a class on how to memorize things, you're depending on a skill set that they really haven't matured yet to learn a subject that doesn't require memory. So it's very confusing the way we're approaching this. So I'm gonna show you from a logical perspective how numbers work according to the way my brain sees it. So look at this uh, number pad here. This is called the scoreboard, so forget about those guys. Just think about the numbers in the yellow. No big deal, I'm just gonna ask you a question in a second. Just shout out the answer as fast as you can. In the yellow area, 
How many numbers are there? Ten. ten. Is there a ten? No. No, it's really zero through nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. But the way our world is wired, we all grow up thinking like this. The human body is designed to have ten fingers. We all go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's just how the world is. But that's not how numbers work. Numbers are zero through nine. Ten is just a two-digit number. And when you turn on a calculator, the only reason it works is because it starts at zero. So if we want to turn on our calculator, we have to count zero. So we have 10 fingers and there's 10 digits and it goes like this, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's really zero through nine. And when you stop and look at the world through the numbers of zero through nine instead of one through 10, all this crazy stuff starts to happen. I'm just gonna show you a couple things. We won't get into too many details tonight. But uh, look at, when I was in third grade, our teacher had written this on the board, just the, the digits, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And before she could say anything, I stopped her for some reason. I said, excuse me, who picked these shapes? Why do numbers look like they do? And my teacher hated me instantly. <laughs> and uh, I was, uh, I was just curious, you know, and she goes, I don't know. And so we asked other teachers, they didn't know. So I sort of made it my mission to ask, to find out why numbers look like they do. I've heard some cool stories. My favorite one is this one, is that the inventors of these shapes wanted you to be able to figure out the value of the shape just by looking at it, by counting the corners. So zero is a circle. How many corners are there? Nine. That's why zero is a circle. One started out like this <coughs> because that gives it one angle. So everybody knew that was a one. The number two started out like our letter Z because there's two Eight. angles. The number three started out like this little hieroglyph looking because there's one, two, three corners, three angles. So everybody knew that was a three. The number four started out like this because this shape has one, two, three, four angles, four corners. The number five was almost the same. They just put a little tail on it, looked like that. That gives you one, two, three, four, five, Angles, cool. Six was easy. They just boxed it up. It looked like that. That gives you one, two, three, four, five, six corners, six angles. Seven was easy. We draw it like that, but somebody smart came up with that. That's yep. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven angles. Everybody cool. Isn't that crazy? And then eight, you'd think that would be tough, but then she used the hourglass symbol that has one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, with the outside angles. And then nine looked pretty crazy. It looked like this, but it got the job done because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. Have you ever seen that before? No. When third grade kids see that, they are mad at their teachers for not having shared that beforehand. It's a simple way to connect kids to these shapes, which is, turns out to be is the most powerful language on the planet Earth. I'm speaking to you in English right now. In English, I have to use the 27 letters of the alphabet and create words and letters, or words and sentences to communicate with you. Uh, when I'm speaking as the human calculator in the, word, in the language of numbers, I have to use the 10 digits, zero through nine. There's 27 letters, what, you don't believe that? How many letters are there? I'm trying to think. There's, how many letters are there? I think it's 26. Uh-uh, it's 27. 27. <laughs> the next time you read an email, look for all the, all the letters, okay? There's 27 letters, and there's one letter that is the most important one. We don't count it. Do you know what it is? Look at an email. It's the space. The space is like the zero of letters. The next time you type an email... Don't put any spaces in your email and see what your friends say. All right, space is a very important letter. It's the most used letter, but we just don't count it. It's just like zero. Kids don't think zero is a number, it doesn't count. But really, it's a very important one. So I'm speaking to you in this language of numbers, the most powerful language. The biggest number up there is the number nine. But here's what happens. We all memorize our math facts. So there's really no logic or patterns to our understanding of this. We just memorize it. We gut it out, we memorize it, and eventually through life we see two and two is four and confirm it. 
But I'm gonna share with you something that I think is gonna change the way kids learn numbers is, the biggest number is nine. There's a simple pattern to know all the numbers that add up to nine. Just go like this, start writing your digits, zero, one, two, three, four, and now keep going underneath backwards, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And look what happened. What's zero plus nine? One plus eight, two plus seven, three plus six, and four plus five. Those are all the ways to make nine. So I, when I'm in a school and talking to kids, I'll say, okay, so I should be able to shout out a number, and you gotta shout out the number back to me to make both of those numbers add up to nine. So if I say zero, you say nine, I say one, you say eight. So you go all the way around, four is five, five is four, six is three, seven is two, eight, and one is nine is zero. So now you got this in your brain, and I wanna share with you the secret to numbers. The reason I'm here tonight is, um, I, I love Steve Wozniak. I met him many, many years ago. I uh, got to ride around on a, a Segway with him in his office. It was quite an experience just to meet this fascinating guy. So uh, just for what he's done already, I celebrate it, but for what he's doing now with Wazhu, uh, education, making kids love tech. I mean, it's just right up my alley. I love this stuff. Um, but it seems like this is getting in the way of a lot of kids connecting to having the opportunity to get into these STEM fields. If they don't feel like they're good at arithmetic or numbers or math, they usually try, they won't, they'll avoid technology, a lot of them will. So this is an opportunity to connect kids to numbers. So instead of memorizing their math facts, there's the secret to numbers. Uh, every number in the universe higher than nine adds down to nine. Let me show you what I mean. First number bigger than nine is the number 10. You just write it down. Now add up all the digits in that number. What's a one plus a zero? The total of those digits is one, right? Put the total underneath and then subtract. What's 10? Take away one. Yeah, nine. Every number in the universe does that. Goes back to nine. Try 11. You write down the number. You add up the digits. One plus one is two. Put the total underneath and subtract. 11 minus two is nine. Try it with 12. One plus two adds up to three. 12 take away three is nine. Let's try a little bit bigger number. Let's try like 16. One plus six gives you a seven. Put the seven underneath and subtract. 16 minus seven is nine. Let's try a bigger one, 19. Add them up. One plus nine gives you 10. Put the total underneath and subtract, and you'll get nine. And watch what happens with bigger numbers. If you do 20, you just add up the digits, two plus zero is two. Put the total underneath and subtract, and look at the answer, it's 18, but what's one plus eight? Nine. Every number in the universe does this. It'll go back to nine. Let's try another number. Uh, today when I was driving here, I saw a speed limit sign that said 55. So let's add it up, five and five is 10. Put the total underneath, subtract, 55 minus 10, is 45, look at the answer, what's four plus five? Nine. Nine. So everybody right now in the audience and watching, uh, think of your age, add those two digits together, take that total and subtract it from your age. And the answer you get should be a number that adds up to nine. Did it work for you? Mm -hmm. It should, if it did, don't say anything, because you're wrong, all right? Uh, <laughs> but um, it does, it works, it always works. So I'm gonna guess the average age of the audience today here is 26, all right? So let's try it. Two plus six is a, a compliment, right? Okay, hey, 26 minus eight is 18, and if you look at that answer, 18, one plus eight is nine. Now, no big deal, right? But this freaked me out. Uh, I had invented a new calendar uh, right before Y2K to save us from Y2K. And uh, it didn't go over too well, the calendar didn't catch on, but um, uh, it was a 13 month calendar. And it was supposed to come out on 9-9-99, right before Y2K. And the newspaper decided not to print the story that day and I was all bummed out. And I was playing golf with a friend of mine here in town named Alice Cooper. Some of you might know who he is. He's a rock and roller. That's it. And uh, we got to the 18th hole, and Alice says, hey, Scott, don't worry. Everything happens for a reason. The paper wasn't supposed to cover it today for whatever reason. I go, I hate when people say that it happens for a reason stuff. And uh, we got down to the 18th green, and Alice goes, hey, I wrote a song called 18. You remember his song, 18? Yeah. One plus eight is nine. Yeah. He goes, why does 18 add up to nine? I said, Alice, that's easy. Any number times nine, the answer adds up to nine. Three times nine is 27. 
2 and 7 is 9. 4 times 9, 36. 3 and 6 is 9. 5 times 9, 45. 4 and 5 is 9. And Alice is like, okay, I don't care. And I'm driving home, <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking about this, and uh, I looked at the number 13. And for some reason, my brain just said, hey, 1 plus 3 is 4. 13 minus 4 is 9. And I just started laughing out loud. Like, what a coincidence to notice this on 9999. And I wrote down 11. I tried it with 11. 1 and 1 is 2. 11 minus 2 is 9. I wrote down my birthday, my bank account number, my social security number. I wrote down every number, added them up, took it away, and it will always go back to 9. Even if you do a three-digit number, I mean, it goes up to infinity. But if you do a three-digit number... 123. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Put it underneath and subtract. You get 117. Look at the answer. 1 plus 1 plus 7 is 9. So I started calling all my math friends. I'm like, hey, everything goes back to 9. What is this called? And nobody could tell me what it was. I took two years. I searched the planet, communicating it to math people, trying to figure out well, how come nobody's talking about this. Everything goes back to 9. This is like a magic trick on steroids. You know, it works and it's logical. Nobody could tell me what it was, and then I was on tour in Australia two years later, in 2001, and I, was, I got in an argument with a radio host on the last day of my tour, and he, I mean, it was a, ge a nice gesture, he handed me his book, Adam Spencer, that's his name, uh, he handed me a book that he had written about the numbers 1 through 100 on the air as I was finishing my interview, and I said to him, I go, well, what about zero? You know, you, you skipped zero. And he's like, wow, zero doesn't... I was like, what? Wait, oh, you know what I mean? So we got into this huge argument about zero counting, is it a number, and all this stuff. And I was still upset when I got on the plane. I'm flying home to America. And um, that's when it hit me, that there's a purpose for this pattern. So we got some smart people in the room. What's one plus one? Yeah, prove it to me. If I'm a little nine-year-old kid, how would you prove to me one plus one is two? You could go like this, an object, you got another object, put them together, you got two objects. So counting objects, right? But if the kid has to do 36 plus 47, that's a lot of objects to count. So other than counting things, how else could you prove to me that one plus one is two? You could punch it into a calculator to check it. You could call your old math teacher, say, hey, one and one, is it still two? But there's no logical check. We just have to memorize it. But now, you all know the secret to numbers is everything goes back to nine. And look what this unlocks. Every number becomes a lesson. The number 11 was designed to teach humans one plus one. We've all memorized that it's two, but now you can plug it in and check it. Put what you think it is underneath and subtract. If you get nine, everything is fine. It's a checker for the human brain to learn arithmetic. And I'll show you how powerful this is. 11 teaches one plus one. If you don't think one plus one is two, let's say you're having a bad day, you think it's three, let's plug it in. What's 11 minus three? It's not nine. So that tells you that that is the wrong answer. Only the right answer will fit here and it will train your brain for every basic math fact. If you wanna learn two plus two, just use the number 22. You've memorized it's four, but now you can check it. Plug it in. 22 minus 4 is 18. Look at the answer. 1 plus 8 is 9. Everything is fine. My mission is to reach every child on the planet Earth before they're 9 years old. So the year that they're 9 years old, every number they see on the planet Earth will go back to their age, the number 9. When the kids are in the car going to school and they see the speed limit sign that says 30, your 9-year-old kid should be able to say to you, Hey, Mom, Dad, 30. 3 plus 0 is 3. 30 take away 3 is 27, 2 and 7 is 9, everything is fine. If they can't do any of those three steps, it's an easy identifier for you as a teacher or a parent to identify the gaps in that student's learning skills when it comes to arithmetic and help fill them in. So now when they see 55, they got to be able to do 5 and 5 is 10, 55 minus 10 is 45, 4 and 5 is 9. You take them to a baseball game and number 44 runs across the field, your kids should be able to say 4 and 4 is 8. 44 minus 8 is 36, 3 and 6 is 9. You give a kid a whole year of every number coming back to their age, the number 9, they're going to feel like every number is their friend. They're going to feel f confident with their basic numbers and arithmetic. And now our teachers could teach them math. 
But right now, by nine years old, these kids have memorized some math facts, and all they figured out is they ain't going to do any math as soon as they don't have to. And so I really believe this, this uh, chapter, I call it chapter zero, is the missing link. And if kids would learn this first, it would make their life so much easier for basic arithmetic. They'll be a fluent in the language of numbers, and now you can teach them how to use that the rest of their lives. Just like in coding, once you get the basics down, you can go as high as you want to go. But if you don't have the foundation, you're not going to go that far. So I believe this is the missing link to teaching our kids math. And so I live right here in Phoenix. That 999 thing happened to me right here in Phoenix at the Arizona Biltmore at 9 o'clock in the morning. So, and uh, I mean, just because we're here tonight, just have fun, you know. Uh, it, right, what a coincidence is it's 9999. Okay, that's crazy enough. It was at 9 a.m. We were on the 18th hole, 1 plus 8 is nine, right? And look at where we were, the word Phoenix. When you spell Phoenix, look at the last two letters, I-X. Anybody know what that is in Roman numerals? Nine. nine. And the initials, or the uh, abbreviation for Arizona is A-Z, which are the first and the last letters of the alphabet, A to Z. And so I want Arizona to be the ground zero of where kids start to realize that numbers are zero through nine, and everything is zero through nine, just like A through Z not one through 10 and um, whatever, B through, I don't know what you would do if you stick the end. So that's pretty weird that all this happened in Phoenix on this time, the nine thing works. So I'm freaking out, I'm sitting there at my house, I'm going, how come nobody's talking about this stuff? How can I illustrate this in a way that makes sense? So I just started writing down zero through nine over and over again. And this thing popped out of my brain. This is a numbered grid. Um, that goes from, oh, let me, uh, let me get to the right slide here. Uh, this is a number grid that goes from zero, zero to 99. If you go to any school in America and around the world, all the number charts are one through 100. There's no patterns, there's no symmetry, nothing. They're, it's just a dead board. This is the exact opposite of that. By starting with zero, you line up all the tens, all the zeros, all the tens, all the twenties, all the thirties, all the forties. There's your symmetry. All right. So now there's order to this, which didn't exist with the one through hundred. So I am looking at this thing and I'm going, wait a second, I'm seeing all these patterns. So if you call, if you just focus on the red digits, the right digits, see how the red digits go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine across <coughs> the red digits, zero through nine, zero through nine, zero through nine, 10 times. If you look at the red digits the other way, it's all the zeros, it's all the ones, it's all the twos. But now look at the blue numbers, and the blue numbers go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the other way, over and over again. And then all the blue zeros, and all the blue ones, and all the blue twos. This is just zero through nine, 10 times in both directions, and it popped this matrix out. And so I knew there was more to it, so I grabbed 10 crayons, yeah, I have crayons, uh, and, um, I picked a different color for each digit to see what other patterns would explode off of this thing. And I've ended up creating a coloring book that's discovered 216 patterns that will teach your kids all their basic math facts just using 10 crayons for the 10 digits zero through nine and discovering them on this number grid. So it's, we talk about STEM and STEAM. STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. This is art and math. We're getting two of the five letters of STEAM with this number grid, this matrix. And watch what happens. This is a blank page. Every page is just zero through 99 blank. On the top, it asks the kids on this page to find all the zeros, color them in. So you can see all the numbers that end in zero, all the numbers that start in zero. Watch what happens. The next page, you have to find all the ones or discover all the ones. You can see all the tens and the numbers that end in one. Here's all the numbers that end in two and start with two. And look at the shape that it creates. Every number reveals a plus sign, the symmetry. And now there's no fives anywhere else, just on that row and that column. There's no, it's so it's identifying where numbers are, but also where they aren't. Here's all your sixes, all the sevens, all the eights, all the nines, and then they have to do them all together on this page. When you've got 10 crayons going, 10 digits, and you gotta find these 10 patterns, this is a little challenging. It looks like it might be simple. It's not, kids make a lot of mistakes on this because you gotta be focused you got to concentrate. And so here we are at Watch U, where we're trying to show people how to code, how to change the world through this language of coding, right? What I'm sharing with you, I believe, is the coding of the human brain for numbers. 
This is in a specific sequence, these 216 slides. If our students would go through these slides in the order that I've got here, it would be no different than a coding program wiring the brain for basic number sense. And so I'll, I'll take you just through a few more uh, examples. This next chapter is your addition facts. Which, which two digits can you add together to make zero? The only one that works is double zero, because zero plus zero is zero, right? Everybody see what I mean? Which numbers have two digits that add up to one? One and 10, zero plus one, one plus zero. What are all the numbers that have digits that add up to two? All the numbers that add up to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at right through the middle of the painting. Zero plus nine, one plus eight, two plus seven, three plus six. All the nine facts. And I stopped there, but it, I, something caught my eye and I realized there's all your tens. One plus nine, two plus eight, three plus seven, four plus six. Here's all your 11 combinations. Here's how you make 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And notice there's only one way to make 18. There's only one way to make zero. There's all these special spatial density things that happen with numbers when you go through this experience of this matrix. And then they have to do them all together. So look at the color. Can you see the color coordination of all the addition facts now? So when the kids are completing this, they're reinforcing everything they discovered one level at a time, one number at a time, now doing it all in the same grid. This is the mastery grid, if you will. And when kids complete this, it proves to you that they understood everything in that chapter. There's no way to hide. If there's a color wrong, it's easy. It sticks out pretty easily. The next chapter, which blew me away the most, was subtraction. <coughs> the only way to make nine is subtraction is nine take away zero. There's no other two digits you can use to make nine. How do you make eight in subtraction? Eight take away zero, nine take away one. How do you make seven? Seven take away zero, eight take away one, nine take away two. How do you make sixes in subtraction? Fives, fours, threes, twos, ones, and there's zero. Zero minus zero, one minus one, two minus two, three minus three, four minus, all these things you and I take for granted. But when you experience it through this and with color, it really reinforces it. And this even goes into negative numbers. Here's all the ways to make negative one. Zero minus one, one minus two, two minus three. How do you make negative two? How do you make negative three, four, five, six, seven, eight, negative nine? And then they have to do them all together and you can see the color wave going in the other direction, introducing all the subtraction facts, reinforcing those skills. The next one freaked me out. It's just, I just threw this one in there. I don't know if anybody cares about this one, but this is called differences. You know how, if you ask kids, which numbers have differences of three? Well, what, four and seven, five and eight. You know, it's, 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 it's a little bit of air math, but this thing brings it all together. This asks them, find all the numbers on the number grid whose digits have a difference of zero. So these numbers are all have the same numbers, so difference of zero. Find all the numbers on the matrix who have digits with differences of one. There's all the numbers, their digits have a difference of one. Yeah, you see the pattern? Here's all the numbers that have a difference of two, a difference of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then they have to do them all together, uh, reinforce that. So you can see how much dexterity and new number pattern, how many number patterns there are here. Kids are already freaking out. This isn't even the good part of the matrix. This is just to get them so they understand what we're trying to talk to them about. And then this next chapter, I'll fly through this one, is the counting bee. So I'm introducing the national counting bee. It's like the national spelling bee, but it's a counting bee. It's numbers and a stopwatch. My world record is 15 seconds. So every kid at each level will get 15 seconds. So this number grid teaches kids how to count because here's the counting bee. The first level is all the kids have 15 seconds to count by three, all right? So, but nobody goes three, six, nine, 12, 15. Every student, when they get on stage, they get a random starting number. So when you get up on stage, you might have to start at seven, count by three, go. So you've got to say seven, 10, 13, 16, 19, and so on as fast as you can for 15 seconds. And we count how many answers you get. Next student gets up on stage, you might have to start at 13 and count by three, go. Start at eight, count by three. Everybody gets a random number, but you're all doing the same thing, counting by three. Next level, you gotta count by four for 15 seconds, starting at a random number. Then by five and by six, and you go up as high as you can, see how many answers you can get. So I wanted to communicate to the kids, so here's the counting bee on this number grid. 
This asks the kids to start at zero and count by zero. I know that sounds simple, but teaching kids how to learn instructions, to understand instructions, this is a perfect opportunity because they have to start at zero so they color it in and then count by zero. That's the only answer. This one asks to start at zero, count by one. Everything lights up. Start at zero and count by two. And look at the beautiful patterns that erupt off this thing. Start at zero, count by three. Count by four. Count by five. Count by six. Count by seven. Count by eight. Count by nine. Then it says start at one, count by zero. Start at one, count by one. Start at one, count by two. Start at one, count by three. So there's a hundred patterns in this chapter that teaches kids how to start at every number and count by every number to prepare for the first levels of the counting beats. So this is a way for them to experience it with numbers, art, and um, the patterns in the matrix. And now the, um, there's just one part left on the matrix is right here. Notice how the numbers increase by one as you go to the right and they increase by 10 as you go down. You can add on this matrix. There's, that's zero plus zero. This is 10 plus one. So you just put your finger on a 10. If you want to add one, just move one to the right. You land on your answer. If you want to do 20 plus two, 30 plus three, 40 plus four, 50 plus five, and so on, 80 plus eight, 90 plus nine. Now let's do a random one, two plus three. So you can have the kid start at two. To add three, they just go one, two, three, and they land on the answer. They move through the matrix. They experience arithmetic. They experience addition. They just don't do this error math and memory stuff. Here's 10 plus 12, start at 10. To add 12, you go 10, one, two, and you land on your answer. Here is 34 plus 25, start at 34. To add 25, you just go 10, 20, one, two, three, four, five, and you land on your answer. Kids can, they, it's just a whole different way to teach them addition. They experience it the whole way. Here's one where it carries, 28 plus 36. Start at 28, to add 36, you move 10, 20, 30, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you land on your answer, 64. It wraps around perpetually. So this number grid, this coloring book is, my goal is to get this in the hands of every kid in elementary schools in America that are under nine years old, to prepare them for the national counting bee, to instill them with a sense of numeracy, to have basic number sense so our teachers can teach kids math and hopefully get them into technology, engineering, science, and all these other things. So I know I'm running short on time probably, but before I go any further, uh, are there any questions on anything I just went over? Good, all right, no, I'm just kidding. Anybody, <laughs> anybody, anything on anything? I wanted to go as fast as I could there. Yes, sir? I just had a question, like, you said that it came out with nine, but did you have, did it, do you have, like, a name for it? Like, what is it that you're calling it? Yeah, thanks for saying that. What do you call this nine thing? There's a phrase in mathematics. Uh, a guy sent me a thing, it's called modulation. All bases modulate to one less than their base. So if you did the same exercise in base eight, if you lived in a base eight world, everything would go back to seven. If you did in a base 12 world, everything goes back to 11. So there's this modulation. But at what point in, in math, college math, do we learn this? I don't know, but I haven't really talked to many people that are familiar with modulation and nobody's figured out a way to apply this to teach our kids their math facts for some reason. There was no connection there. So that's what I'm trying to do. Does that well, answer I mean, your question? Do you have a name for it, like, other than modulation? Do no. No. My last name, Flansburg, has nine letters, so that's probably a coincidence, <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. I don't want to. <laughs> no, I, hey, I, uh, I, do, I do. I call it the nine thing. You know, it's a pretty pathetic title. I'll work. Thanks for reminding me to work on that. Um, well, my sister might dress up, they call it to the nine. The, yeah, dress to the nines. There's all kinds of things, a cloud nine, you know, all kinds of stuff. So um, uh, can I just do one more thing with you guys? Can I take, take you through the calendar? Is that okay? Yeah. We're all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I served in the United States Air Force for six years. I did four years as an um, assistant in overseas doing intel uh, for the Office of Special Investigation stuff. Really fun, cool, crazy stuff. Uh, but then the last two years I did, I retrained into computer programming. And this was in 1987, 86, 87. So literally, I had to create punch cards using a flow chart and put the punch cards into a Unisys system and, and if one card was wrong, they're all wrong, you know. So that was 30 years ago. I love programming, I love flow charts, I love, and that's how I attack life now. So the basics of coding really do come in handy in the rest of your life if you apply them in a, in a, a logical way. So that's what I've done with how I approach life. 
and it came to me with a calendar. After I got out of the service, um, I ended up in Florida, and I was waiting to fly here to Phoenix in 88, and uh, I had a day to waste, and I walked in the public library, and I found a book about the calendar, uh, figuring out what day of the week that date is on. You've, you've seen people that can do that. So since you helped me out during the show, what's your birthday, month, day, year? 10 one That was on a Wednesday. So I can calculate any date in history in about a second. Um, I was in the library that day and I was waiting for my flight to come out here. And this little book, it was, it was maybe this big. It was 100 years old. Hadn't been checked out in 50 years. <laughs> and it was all about these calendar patterns. The guy goes, I think there's a pattern in the calendar and you can calculate what day of the week a date was on. So I took a little three and a half by five index card and a pencil in the library and I wrote this out, but here's the algorithm. You have to take the year plus the year divided by four plus the day plus the value for the month divided by seven. You can figure out any date in history using this algorithm. So you saw it 10, 180, is that what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was a Wednesday. I had to do, uh, uh, well, we'll just use your birthday as an example, 10, 180. So the year was 80 plus 80 divided by four calculates how many leap years have occurred. The date was the first. And every month has a different value. It's based on how many days are in each previous month on a base seven thing. So October works out to a value of zero. So I have to do all that and then divide it by seven. So 80 plus 20 is 100 plus one is 101. So seven into 101 is, uh, is um, 14 remainder three. Wednesday, right? Is that what I told you? Yeah, okay. So. When I do this division, if the remainder is zero, it's a Sunday. If the remainder is one, it's a Monday. Two is a Tuesday. So I can do this pretty quickly now. You can tell me a day. What's your birthday? Six, seven, eighty-two. Six, seven was on a Monday. About 3.30? <laughs> uh, I work on the time. Okay. So, uh, Probably a few days. Yeah, yeah. So somewhere on the earth it was 3.30. Okay. So, uh, so this is the only way to figure out what day of the week a calendar is on. So we lived by this calendar. We almost died with Y2K. This calendar was invented by people 2,000 years ago who thought the Earth was flat and that they were the center of the universe. And they didn't even count the whole year. Uh, today is um, October, right? We're in October, right? The word oct means eight, but October is our 10th month. Nov means nine, but November's our 11th month. Dec means 10, but December is our 12th month. Sept means seven, but September is our ninth month. All these words don't even mean what they say. Nobody knows what day their birthday is. Nobody knows how many days it is till Christmas. The calendar has shut our brain off from tuning into time. And so we we're gonna all die at Y2K. So it really inspired me. I'm like, gee, we better come up with something, you know? And so I came up with a better calendar. Uh, I was visiting a school in May of 99 and a little girl asked me to count by the number 28 of the school I was doing. And I just started counting 28, 56, 84, 112, 140, 168, 196, 224, 52, 280, 308, 33, 336, 364. And I heard myself say 364 and I was like, wow, that's almost a year. If you do 28 times 13, that's 364. Why aren't we using a 13 month calendar Every month we'd have 28 days. Now we just gotta sneak in one extra day. Right now, it's 28, 29, 30, 31, 30, 31. How do you know how many days are in each month? You gotta memorize some poem on your knuckles. There's no technology, no logic to whatsoever to it. And so um, I'm driving home that day, I'm like, why are we doing this 13, 28 thing? Our, our bodies are a 13, 28 time machine. The human body has 13 major joints. And our bodies work off of a thing called the biorhythm which is a 28 day cycle, lunar cycles, pregnancy cycles, everything is wired off of these 28 day cycles. If we had a calendar that matched that, we could tune into our brain and our body and the nature around us with the same natural patterns. But for some reason we've got this disguised way to keep track of time. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, I gotta figure out how do we, how do we get that extra day? I'm missing a day. And I got home that night, it was Cinco de Mayo 99, and it hit me to have 13 months but the number of them, zero through 12. There's a zero month, a one month, just like zeros and ones for coding. There's a zero month, a one month, a two month, all the way to 12 months, which is 13 months altogether, zero through 12. So there's 13 months, 
Every month has 28 days, except the zero month has a zero day. So New Year's Day is zero, zero, and then there's one through 28, 13 times in a row. And it would make every month the same. It would make all our paychecks land on the same day of the week every month. We could figure out how many days are in between days. From a coding perspective, if you adopt this formula, this calendar of 13 months of 28 days, watch what you can do. Uh, what's today? 10 what? what? What planet are we on? What day is it? 25. 25. Okay, it's 10 25. Oh, let me write that a little lower. So it's 10 25. Let's say you wanted to see how many days it was from July 4th, right, on your calendar to this 10 25. Now, forget what days you are. Let's just say on my calendar, seven month, four day, 10 month, 25 day, okay? You see what I mean? You couldn't tell me how many days it is to, from July 4th until today. You gotta remember how many days are in July, August, September, you gotta do, it's crazy math. But with this, here's all you do. How many months difference? Three. How many days difference? 21. Three months, 21 days. Four weeks every month, so you know instantly 13 weeks. Every date could be calculated to another date. You could be on, you could be on <coughs> February 14th and say, oh, until Christmas, it's uh, 312, you know, like, you could just instantly calculate, as long as you can multiply by 28, you can figure out what, t what day it is and how many days to another day. So this is called, I call it the human calculator calendar. It's a pretty lame name, right? <laughs> it's better than the nine thing, but I'm working on it, all right? Um, so I, I'm trying to get this calendar out there. It didn't go over too big for Y2K. I don't have time to wait for Y3K. And so I'm hoping that some businesses will consider adopting this as an additional tool. So when you do your finances for 2018, if you would just throw this calendar, let your accountant do a 1328 uh, analysis of the year, how much more efficient would our logistics be? And if on the bottom line of a company could save even 1% just by the logistical uh, tidiness of this calendar versus the Gregorian calendar, uh, that 1% for a billion dollar company is $10 million. So around the world, we do that all the time and we can save a lot of money by just keeping track of time with a more efficient way. So. Uh, I'm just begging if anybody knows any company that uh, is looking for a way to save 1% on their bottom line and is into 13 month calendars, I'm their guy, okay? So <laughs> please connect me with them. Uh, and so, okay, so that's, I just wanted to get that out. Thanks for giving me the few extra minutes. Uh, is there anything else that we wanted to talk about? Any questions? Anything at all? Are we good? Uh, this is easy. Yes? The calendar, uh, the, uh, sorry, the coloring books. The coloring book. I do, they're on my website. You can uh, just hit a button there and they can go through Amazon. Okay. Yeah, I think they're nine ninety nine. No, I know they are. Because <laughs> nine, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your number B. Counting B. Counting B. Yes. Is that, have you done one yet? Oh, or? thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot. The whole reason I'm here is uh, we met last a couple weeks ago at the Arizona Science, uh, Arizona SciTech Festival in Mesa. And uh, we're hosting the first ever inaugural counting bee in two weeks from today on November 8th at Mesa Community College. It's the Arizona counting bee, the 2018 Arizona counting bee. So if anybody knows any kids in Arizona that are gifted with numbers, just do the 15 second thing, have them submit the score to our website. Tomorrow we're inviting the top students from across the state to come into the finals. And we're gonna film it. Uh, and then we're going to put a package together and send it to the schools across America so next year we can have the first national county bee. So we'll have a state county bee in each state, obviously, and those winners will go to the national county bee next year. So really excited because the difference is this, is the spelling bee has been going on for 90 years, but it only works in America, A through Z English. The county bee works in every country on the planet, Australia, Japan. Anybody can do a county bee in their native language, and identify their fastest mathletes and send them to the International County B, which will be in 2020, the first one. So thanks for reminding me, it's dream come true. I've been visiting schools every day to promote the County B. And at the end of my show, when I show the kids all this stuff, I'll ask if there's any kids brave enough to volunteer to stand up and try to do a County B. And so if a kid stands up and says, okay, start at eight and count by three, go. And the kid, you know, will give them 15 seconds and the most beautiful part is the children, the rest of the school reacting when that kid stands up and does something they never really seen or thought they could do. And this little boy in Mesa the other day, uh, he started eight count by three, he went 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26, and he just went into a rhythm. And it was amazing to watch and he finished 
and the whole school erupted. And so to get the fastest mathlete to be the coolest person in the school was great. And then one more level up, we challenged the teachers. One of the categories is for teachers to be in the counting bee. We wanted to find the fastest teacher. So one of the lady teachers stood up that day and she counted and she did it just as fast as the little boy. But just the camaraderie, the competitive nature of the county bee is really gonna be something that's gonna be fun to watch go around the world. Because it's not just to identify the fastest mathletes in each school. That's one component of the county bee. But more importantly, what I've discovered is going through this process of launching the Arizona County Bee is 99% of these kids don't think they could be in the county bee. They really don't. They're not numerate. They memorize their math facts. There's no foundation. You ask me to count by three, and they're three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. But you say start at seven and count by three, and they look at you like they're an alien. They've never even asked their brain that question before. Yeah. And so this is a new skill set, a new exercise. So uh, if anybody knows any companies that are interested in becoming our sponsor, uh, we're looking for a title sponsor for the national one next year, as well as some local ones in Arizona for this year and next year. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, and our goal is to bring the fastest mathletes to this stage and celebrate these kids like we celebrate our athletes, except celebrating mathletes. And I really think it's gonna be a way to, on the ground floor to get kids in elementary school excited about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So uh, with that, I, I, I could talk all night. I have a lot of free time, so I think about a lot of things. But if you have any questions, I'll stick around afterwards if you wanna wait till after that. But if any last questions? Just what's your, your uh, website? Oh, thehumancalculator.com. And on Twitter, I'm at Human Calculator. And uh, Instagram and all that stuff, at Human Calculator. If you guys don't mind sharing, and uh, we'll plug the WAZU. And God bless Steve Wozniak for starting this. And I hope you guys are loving your experience at WAZU. Uh, I really think there's a way to get more kids inspired into this space. And it comes down to basic arithmetic. You know, really, if we have more kids that are grounded in numbers and arithmetic, there's a much better chance of getting more kids in this door. The door's here, too. So thank you all very much for coming out tonight and hearing me out. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tom. Great job, buddy. All right, thank you for coming out. Some, some gift for you. All right. Some thank you. Swag. Love it. And let's give it up one more time for... Thanks, everybody.